Good morning everybody and a very warm welcome to Barringer and today is going to be talking about Volmer and we're going to be making a start, this is going to be like part one of my Volmer project and for those of you who aren't sure what I'm talking about it's just to do with a new container terminal that I'm going to be building and I've got so I've got a bit of progress and I've also wanted to show you a little bit of research on how I go about doing the research before the build. So here we have in front of you um, my monitor and my computer and it's currently running train sim. Um, this is 2017 and we are currently um, at Grangemouth and that's in Scotland and with a Freightliner class 66 here we have here and if I unpause it you can probably hear it running in the background I'll just turn it up a bit um, so this is a bit of playtime and it's also a bit of research time in some ways because um, I'm building my container terminal and I'm using this as a bit of a guide I'm also going to show you some images as well, some stills, all to do with research, just to give you a rough idea of what it's like and what you have to do. I'm trying to work out the procedure and how I'm going to incorporate that into my track plan and into my um, into, into layout, basically. So as you can see, um, I'm just going to have a little bit of a view around. Um, we've got the big crane down here, um, and we've got our intermodals over here. And basically, I'm just sort of checking and getting a feel for what goes on here. And by running some of these scenarios and playing some of the, the scenarios, you get an idea of what the procedures are or how you go about doing it. So these are this is the container um, crane here. At the back here, we've got um, we've got the buffers, so it all comes to an end. And obviously you've got, a, you've got a, reach, a reach stacker here and all the intermodal freight just stacked up along here with various clutter, porter cabins, vehicles just littered about the place. Also to take note is stuff like ground signals which also I hope to incorporate. Um, I hope to incorporate on, on my layout as well. So, you've got these, so currently I've got a, I've got a green signal which is basically these two white lights. Um, so I'm just going to take you for a quick drive before we just move on. Um, so i just switch some headlights on. There you go. And it's currently raining so this is inside the cab. Let me just set it up. Um, I'm just going to switch the instrument lights on and there you go I need to put the reverse handle in so I'm going to do that oh that's the AWS that's the wiper and as you can probably see there's a 66 passing us now with an intermodal do is I think we're just going to collect some freight, that's all I'm going to do I think. Um, obviously here we've got various got various things that we can do here. Now if I show you at the, the, the map, just to give you a rough idea of how the procedure works based on what I'm thinking. See the 66 that's just past us, that's here represented on the map. And that's basically heading towards the main line and this one would come back in. And then basically, what happens is you bring your freight into the reception side in here. And then basically, you pick up your, your freight from here or you drop it off from here. And either run around it or you reverse it and you back it in to the intermodal yard. And that's pretty much how um, that works. Or you can even get a shunter to do it, something like that. And there's a separate little siding here for the loco to park up here. So this is basically a map just to sort of show you how it, 
how it all how it all works basically and you can see here that all these all, all terminate here so all those sidings for the intermodal yard and we're here so just so you can hear the just so you can hear the um, 66 we're just going to do that before we shut it down I just wanted to sort of give you a bit of a glimpse of what some of the things that I do just to do a bit of um, a bit of research right, so we go inside the coach I need to take the brakes off so these are the brakes here um, that's the ammeter here that's the speedometer there and I'm just going to take the brakes off and as you can see the needles are just dropping once those needles have dropped down to zero the brakes are released and um, we also need to pull it to forward and that might help as you can see it just crank it up This has actually got the Pro Sound Kit on it from Armstrong Powerhouse. Um, I do actually want to get one of these sheds for my layout. I don't currently own any sheds on my layout. And 66 is known as a shed because of its pitched roof. So that kind of gives it the nickname of shed. Also to look out for are these manual switches. They manually turn the points, so that's something else to add on the layout. Um, security fencing you're looking at here also speed signs these are all things to take note so we're currently doing just climbing speed I'm only just going to go up to here the reception sign and that be it and it was just to sort of give you guys a bit of a, a rundown on what sort of happens here. We've got a little ground signal turn us that we're clear. So that's what these little things are for. This is a speed, uh, the speed sign, and the arrow indicates that the 25 mile an hour is for if you're turning across these points here. spin this around a bit. Those points here to go back onto the main line. So basically if you're coming off the main line you bring your intermodal freight all the way down here and basically drop it off. And at the end here is a head shunt. And I'll show you, for those of you who are not sure what a head shunt is, I'll show you what a head shunt is. It's basically the final stopping point. Now we can, we can go a bit faster, so we're going to... That gives you a chance to listen to 66 as well. Now also you can see the security fencing. Let me just apply some brakes. And as you can see the needles are coming up, which is slowing us down. And we've got the little clear lights for the head shunt. So here we go, so this is the head shunt now that we're approaching. And obviously at this point we would clear those points 
and basically run round the intermodal. I'm just going to stop it here. So I hope this bit has been of use and I'll show you some more. So back at my computer screen with the chain sim turned off and um, basically I've created a file here on my computer of all the some of the Freightliner photographs that I've sort of captured on via Flickr or via Google. So I'm going to quickly put them up on the video as well and then you can have a proper look at them. Um, and then basically so you can have a rough idea of the long, long the lines that I'm thinking of and what I'm doing or what I'm thinking of doing. So this is Volma, the, the Volma crane that I bought, HO scale, 5624, and I said I know, I know I said I wasn't going to build it, but I actually wanted, to, I actually had some time on my hands, and I didn't have the wood, but I had the paint and, and everything, so I decided to build my freight crane. So I wanted to show you what it looked like. So this is what it currently looks like in the freight liner colours and um, I have to say compared to my nuclear flask crane this was a lot easier to put together um, it's still not finished um, I just need to go to the printers to get the um, freight liner logo put on this side and one on the other side and you can see here that this is the um, the actual crane basically that mechanism there and that will go according to the picture it should sort of sit up like that um, then you've got the little the little um, housing um, cubicle for the guy who's going to operate the crane so that's his little that's his little, his little office now that needs to be glued on to there like so but I haven't done that because I want to put some acetate to create the windows and I also wanted to um, varnish it as well so um, before, I, before I glued it in I wanted to do those two bits um, these two bits here will sit along there and they will become the runners as you can see along the top there so that's what those two bits are going to be so I'm not too far off being completed and then these markers here, chevrons, will go along the sides, on this side, and on the inside, and then on that side, and the other side, on the outside of that one. And then we've got the steps and everything like that. Um, it's all very clean and new, so it needs to be toned down. Um, but uh, I'm really pleased with it. Now, these are the runners for it. I haven't sprayed these on, but basically it kind of goes like that. So the crane can run along. So I'm not going to be using these, I don't think. Because I'm actually thinking I'm just going to get some track and use track for that. So it'll have proper track and proper rail. If I've got some to use, or we'll buy some. I think it'll look much better than, than this one here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm also going to take you over to the full yard with this because this will show you sort of how many lengths of track it will cover and come across. So this is it and this again there's another little little test that I did yesterday. I just I was just wondering how many tracks I can get underneath this crane and because I wasn't sure whether it's going to be two but it looks like I'd be quite happy um, to have three and then this bit here will be where, the, where where my 25 is currently at the moment you'd have to imagine that as the freight liner lorry so that'd be parked alongside there waiting to receive its load so that was another little test that I wanted to do I wanted to see how many tracks I can get underneath here so that's really really good so I'm really pleased with that so now just by building the crane 
um, it's given me an ideas as to how many tracks will fit underneath this and give me a little bit more um, an idea of the track plan. Also using the train simulator to also figure out the procedures, the map, the sort of track plan. Um, that all goes and adds to helping me work out what I want to do. And obviously before I do any sort of ballasting or anything like that, um, I would be running some trains anyway. Um, just to test the track work to see if I'm happy with the uh, actual track layout itself. Um, the work will commence on the boards, or should commence on the boards next week. Um, so hopefully I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, this is just kind of something to get me going. And um, yeah, I'm really pleased with it. And like I said, out of, out of the cranes that, that I looked at, I think this was definitely the right one for me to buy. And it was definitely one that wasn't too difficult to put together it didn't take that long at all and there's a lot less pieces a lot less for it to go wrong um, and there was a lot less um, cursing and swearing to be honest in fact there wasn't any on this one because it was literally a pretty decent and relatively easy kit to put together um, so I'm really pleased with it and the colours are also I'm really pleased with it the yellow seems to be the right yellow the green seems to be the right green even though they're not officially like Freightliner green or Freightliner yellow or anything, but they were around much colours. Um, so thanks for watching, and feel free to comment and subscribe, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. So bye for now.